are back at the shop for this week's video. Last weekend was a pretty big weekend for us. Like I told you, we had two nights of racing. We'll start with Friday night. Showed up and uh, it was kind of hot. It was a little bit hotter this weekend than, than it has been, so the track was a little bit greasy. And uh, we went out to practice and uh, the car was kind of sliding around a little bit. Uh, I think that we're to the point now with our car that we can make minor adjustments. When you get your car close, small adjustments make big differences. And uh, we made a couple adjustments for Friday night. Um, went out for the second practice and actually the car was pretty good. So um, we just kind of did our normal thing. Uh, since it was a 100 lapper and they draw the entire field anyway, it allows you to maybe make a couple changes for qualifying that you wouldn't normally make. Because even though you want to sit on the pole and get that extra $100, um, it's a good time to experiment because they're going to draw the whole field. So qualifying came around and um, you know we went out to qualify and uh, I ran I think a 53 and was on the pole. So a uh, pretty good night for us. I think we learned a couple little things for qualifying that are going to help us uh, later in the season. But uh, qualified on the pole, and uh, as I go out to get my pole award, uh, Big Junior, who drew me fourth last time, said he was feeling it again, and uh, I let him go draw. So as I'm coming back from getting my pole award, um, he's coming at me, and I can always tell if he's making a frown face that he's trying to disguise we had a good draw. When I saw him smiling and kind of shaking his head, I knew it was going to be bad. So uh, he let me know, let me know that we drew 20th. So um, pretty big change from where we were last time, and it kind of changes your your strategy and the way you have to think about the race when you know that you're starting that deep into the field. Um, you know, there was a couple crashes, couple things happened here and there, a uh, couple situations where I thought that we were in front of some other cars when the caution came out and they ended up putting us back behind those cars. Um, you know, I know it's hard for the scoring officials to see where everybody's at when the caution comes out because the field freezes, but ultimately that ended up costing us a couple positions because of the circumstances that happened after that with a couple other cautions later. In other words, it maybe put me in this line where I would have been in that line, uh, and it kind of changed the outcome just a little bit. But. Um, not too bad a night. We didn't tear up anything, and I came and finished seventh, came back to seventh. Um, John Smith actually ended up drawing the pole and winning the race, and John, as everybody knows, was second in the points. So uh, after Friday night, John had a, a couple point lead on me, and we fell to second. Um, there were some, like I said, Friday night was the normal show uh, for Bowman Gray and the other divisions. And I told you we want to do something a little bit different this week with our videos. We got several different segments, so don't turn it off until you know we're done because uh, you may miss something cool. But we've said before, uh, I know how hard we work. I know how hard uh, we work in the modified division. I know how much money we spend in the modified division, but um, it's very obvious that the other divisions are just as passionate about what they do and work just as hard. So this week, we featured a driver in the stadium stock division. So hey everybody, we're up here on the balcony getting ready to watch our buddy Jason Tuttero. He actually threw the pole tonight, so you ought to get some good footage from him. So hopefully we'll see him in Victor Lane. My name is Jason Tuttero. I drive the 22 stadium stock at Bowman Gray. Night's race, we start first in the fifth. Car got a little damage from practice and the rest. I'd like to thank my sponsors, Hayes Jewelers, Royal Hill Drag Racing Team, Carolina Drilling, Beach Crushing, Miller's Restaurant, Hill Mark Tire, Mega Machine. They do a lot for us. We work hard on these cars and they take care of us in return with food, drink, tires, gas. We've got a 50 lap of each where we actually qualify this week. We, uh, Appreciate if everybody would the On to Saturday night. Well, it was a pretty special evening because uh, the K&N cars were there, and the only two races that night were the K&N uh, Hall of Fame 150 and the Modified Hall of Fame 100. So uh, there was only two divisions there that night. Um, the K&N cars 
uh, since it was the, the touring series and uh, it was the Hall of Fame 150, there was a lot of uh, a lot of cool people in the house. Jack Ingram and Paul Radford, a uh, lot of the NASCAR representatives were there. Uh, Winston Kelly, who is over the Hall of Fame, um, was in the house. So to kind of touch on uh, the racetrack and the, the racing circumstances, uh, the K&N cars run a, a Goodyear tire, where well, we run a Hoosier tire, but their tire, tire is not treaded. Their tire is slick, just like ours is. And I think that uh, we're coming to find out that even though it's a different compound tire, being a smooth tire instead of a treaded tire, it doesn't, I don't want to say screw up the racetrack, but it doesn't change the racetrack for our tires versus the sportsman street stock and stadium stock divisions running on a treaded tire. I think the difference between those creates a real problem sometimes for us. So um, the only cars that had been on the track all day Saturday and Saturday afternoon were the K&N cars. So when it came time for us to practice Saturday afternoon, it seemed like the track was in pretty good shape. Um, when it got time to qualify, um, John Smith, like I said, was leading. So he went out first, we went out second, and I think Tim was third, Jason went out fourth. Uh, that being said, I went out and ran a 1334, which at that point was the fastest lap of the year. Tim went out right behind me and ran a 26. So um, we ended up qualifying second with a 34. And like I said, the pole being a 26 kind of lets you know that, um, you know, the tr track was in pretty good condition um, for Saturday night. Um, the K&N cars raced first. Uh, it was a lot of cautions, but it was one of the best K&N races that I've seen over there um, since they've started doing that. Uh, it's kind of it's odd to us because we grew up over there watching modifieds and all that stuff. It's it's kind of it's different, I guess you could say, to see those big full body cars because they basically look like a Grand National, Bush Grand National, or a Nationwide now um, car because of the, the size of the car, but. Um, Anyway, it's pretty cool to watch those guys. Uh, I talked to uh, Ben Kennedy, who's driving the GO number 96. He is the grandson, I think, of Bill French Jr. Um, I talked to him before the race, and I knew that the first year they came over there, he had a third place finish and, and got around that play, place pretty good. And next thing you know, he's leading the race and uh, was able to, to take home the victory. So that's pretty cool for the France family legacy to continue through him. Um, and he was able to cel celebrate that victory. So um, that being said, we'll go back to, to our division, the Modifieds. Uh, I sent uh, Philip Dixon in to draw. Uh, he's always done a pretty good job for me, but you know, it's blind luck. You can send, you can send your grandma in or you can send a next door neighbor in and it's basically just blind luck when you reach in that old dirty sock and pull out that poker chip. So uh, we sent Dixon in to draw and he came out and he's the same way with Junior. Uh, it's like a poker face where you know you know the telltale signs and as he comes out he's kind of looking like he's mad <laughs> and, uh, and uh, as he came out you know he let me knew, know that we drew uh, fourth so I said you know anything in the top ten is good anything in the top five is great anything in the top three or four is is excellent so uh, as the race got started uh, the 12 car started in front of me um, and I got ducked in behind uh, the third place car. We ran about five or six, seven laps and we got a caution, so that put me third in line. Uh, it was Lee Jeffries, uh, which Lee had a really good car Friday night, so I knew he was gonna be, uh, be tough to beat. Uh, Kevin Neal in the 07 was second and we were third. So as the race got back going, Kevin Neal stayed in line. I went to the outside and as we uh, got the green, Lee gave me lots of room, and in return, I gave him lots of room. We raced hard, we raced clean, we raced side by side for about two or three laps. And as we're coming down the back stretch, I always tell my spotter, if there's a hole behind the guy, let me know. Now, it's my decision whether I want to go there or not. So uh, what he tells me on the radio is clear behind him if you want it. And as we get close to turn three, Junior says on the radio, clear behind him if you want it, and I almost ducked in line, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to give it one more shot, and I was able to, to get uh, by Lee and make the pass and, um, and get the lead, but uh, from then on out, uh, we led the rest of the race and was able to take home our third victory of the year. Uh, John Smith came up and finished third, so that puts us tied in the points right now, which is uh, the only thing that means to me at this point is, is that we're in contention. 
But the main thing that it means is that we have to go out first to qualify this weekend. So um, if you can just stay close uh, and, and be, you know, in the area of a couple handful of points, uh, then when you get down to the end of the year, you worry about the championship. But right now, uh, knock on wood, things are going pretty good. Uh, we got three victories and two poles. Jason's got two poles and a victory. So uh, hopefully we can keep the momentum going. Uh, it eventually, history tells you that it eventually, the train stops. So we're going to ride the heck out of it as long as we can. We're going to try to go over this weekend. We have twin 25s. So uh, we're going to try to go over and set on the pole and win that first one and hopefully not get too bad a draw in the second race. Uh, if we qualify bad, we'll hope for that draw in the second race and see if we can't get a victory then. But um, thanks to everybody that came out. They did the on-track autograph session like I told you last week. It was awesome to see all the different people and um, a lot of fans that come down. We see a lot of familiar faces after the race uh, on Saturday nights, but there's a lot of fans who have young kids that can't wait that late to come down at you know 11 o'clock, 11:30, um, you know, to come down to, to see us after the race. So it was a good opportunity for those fans to be able to come down and take advantage of, of getting their their new Burt Myers T-shirt or getting an autograph or a picture. Uh, it's cool for us to be able to see the different the drivers and stuff like that too. So uh, anyway, thanks to the fans. Always thanks to my sponsors, uh, Citrus Safe. Uh, Tommy was there Saturday night. So it's always cool when you can win and your sponsor's there. Double bonus was Doug Adams was there with Adams Towing. He got to be there for it. Um, thanks to those guys. Cleanup Supply, uh, John, we appreciate what you do. Haviland Express Lube, Coma, Unwind, um, everybody that makes this possible. Those are my main sponsors, but my crew for working their tail off two nights in a row and uh, being able to celebrate it with a victory. But anyway, come out this weekend, Twin 25s. We're gonna have a great time. See you there. In light of some new information, we want to let everybody know what was formerly Keaton's Campaign Pit Party is now Rally for Riley Pit Party. This event is for a little girl in our local community who has leukemia. Her dad is a Winston-Salem police officer and his family has already been through so much. She's already endured one bone marrow transplant and right now they're trying to boost her cell count to prepare little Riley for a second treatment. Nothing has changed with the event except for the child and the name of the event. Rally for Riley will be June 15th between 12.30 and 3 in the pits at Bowman Gray Stadium behind my holler. Everybody who was going to participate before is still on board because we feel as a group and especially me personally that God has pointed us in the direction to help this little girl and this family first. The ladies auxiliary is still involved. 93.1 The Wolf is still coming out with their big hot dog cooker. So we're going to have raffles, prizes, silent auction. It's just going to be a really good time. And the main thing is, is it's going to be for a great cause. So, Rally for Riley pit party, June 15th, between 12.30 and 3, in the pits at Bowman Gray, behind my holler. Please come out and support this great cause. Thank you, and God bless you.